Ever wondered how the tech giant Apple Inc. came to be? Our tale begins in the year 1976, in the suburban landscape of Cupertino, California. Three visionaries, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne, came together with a shared dream. They imagined a world where technology was not just accessible, but intuitive and user-friendly. A world where computers were for everyone, not just the elite few. Their first step towards this dream was the creation of Apple One, a personal computer kit, hand-built by Wozniak himself, it was a machine far ahead of its time, but it was not an easy path. The Apple Y was not a ready-to-use computer, rather it was a kit that users had to assemble themselves. It was in essence a niche product, and the trio struggled to find their footing in the market. Yet, they did not falter. Their belief was unwavering, their resolve unyielding, they faced numerous challenges, from lack of funds to skepticism from industry veterans. Even their own families doubted their venture, but they persevered, driven by their shared vision and unshakable faith in what technology could do. And let us not forget Ronald Wayne, the oft-forgotten third co-founder. Though his stint with Apple was short-lived, Wayne played a crucial role in the early days. He designed the first Apple logo, wrote the manual for the Apple One, and drafted the partnership agreement that brought Apple Computer Inc. into existence. But just 12 days after the company's formation, Wayne sold his 10% share back to Jobs and Wozniak for a mere $800. A decision he might regret today, considering that share would be worth tens of billions. In those early days they worked out of Jobs' garage, fueled by passion and the dream of a future where technology was as common as the television. They were pioneers in a new frontier, visionaries who dared to dream big and work hard to make those dreams a reality. And thus the seed of Apple was sown, poised to grow into the tech giant we know today. From a humble beginning, how did Apple climb the ladder to success? This is a question that invariably piques the curiosity of tech enthusiasts and casual observers alike. The answer lies in a series of calculated risks, innovative ideas, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. The Apple II, introduced in 1977, marked a significant milestone in Apple's journey. This machine, with its color graphics and open architecture, was not just a product, but a testament to Apple's vision. It heralded the dawn of the personal computer era, propelling Apple from the realm of hobbyists into the mainstream market. The Apple II was more than just a computer, it was a symbol of a digital revolution, a revolution that Apple was leading. However, as the company soared to new heights, internal conflicts started brewing. In 1985, a power struggle within the company led to the departure of Steve Jobs, one of its co-founders. This was a seismic event that shook the very foundations of Apple. Jobs was not just a founder, he was the soul of Apple, the driving force behind its innovative spirit. His departure marked a significant shift in the company's trajectory. Without Jobs' visionary leadership, Apple found itself in uncharted waters. The company began to lose its competitive edge, and for the first time, its future seemed uncertain. The products lacked the innovative spark that had once set Apple apart. The company was in dire straits, grappling with dwindling market share and a lackluster product lineup. But, as they say, with every crisis comes an opportunity. Apple's struggles were a wake-up call a call to introspect and realign its strategies. It was a time of soul-searching, of redefining what Apple stood for and what it aspired to be. The departure of Jobs marked a tumultuous period for Apple, a time that would test its resilience. But this was not the end of the Apple story, far from it. It was the beginning of a new chapter, a chapter that would see Apple rise from the ashes, stronger and more determined than ever before. What happens when the prodigal son returns? Imagine the year is 1997, a year that marked a turning point in the history of Apple. It was the year Steve Jobs, the prodigal son, made his return to the company he had co-founded more than two decades earlier. Now, let's rewind a bit. Jobs had been ousted from Apple in the mid-80s, leaving the company in a state of uncertainty. In the years that followed, Apple struggled to maintain its innovative edge. It was clear the company needed a guiding hand, a visionary leader to bring it back from the brink. So. Who better than the prodigal son himself? With Jobs back in the fold, Apple experienced a renaissance of sorts. It was a time of revolutionary ideas and groundbreaking products that would redefine the tech landscape. One of the first products to emerge from this period was the iMac in 1998. With its distinctive design and powerful performance, the iMac became a beacon of Apple's renewed commitment to innovation. But Jobs wasn't done yet. The new millennium saw the birth of the iPod, a device that turned the music industry on its head. It was sleek, it was stylish, and it put a thousand songs in your pocket. Suddenly, the way we consumed music was changed forever. And then, in 2007, Jobs introduced the iPhone, a revolutionary product that combined a phone, an iPod, and an internet communicator all in one device. It was nothing short of a technological marvel, setting the standard for smartphones that followed. 
Jobs' return to Apple was not just about launching innovative products. It was a period of transformation that restored Apple's image as a pioneer in technology, a company that wasn't afraid to push the boundaries and redefine the rules. With Jobs back in the driver's seat, Apple was on its way to becoming a household name. How does a company cope with the loss of its visionary leader? That's the question that hung in the air after the passing of Steve Jobs in 2011. Jobs was more than just a CEO to Apple. He was its heart and soul. His passing left a void that needed to be filled. Enter Tim Cook, a man who had been with Apple for over a decade, serving as its chief operating officer. He was no stranger to the company's operations or its ethos. Cook took over the reins at a critical juncture in Apple's history, and he was tasked with continuing the legacy of innovation that Jobs had fostered. And let's make no mistake, Cook has more than risen to the occasion. He's led Apple through a period of remarkable growth, overseeing the launch of several groundbreaking products. The Apple Watch, for instance, has revolutionized the wearable technology market. It's a device that seamlessly blends style with functionality, much like Apple's other products. Then there's the HomePod, Apple's answer to the smart speaker market. The HomePod has made waves with its superior sound quality and tight integration with Apple's ecosystem. It's just another example of how Apple, under Cook's leadership, has continued to innovate and push the boundaries of what's possible. In fact, under Cook's tenure, Apple became the first U.S. company to reach a trillion-dollar market cap. That's a testament to the company's continued success in the post-Jobs era. But it wasn't just about the products. Cook has also been a strong advocate for privacy and environmental sustainability, echoing Jobs' belief in the intersection of technology and liberal arts. So, how does a company cope with the loss of its visionary leader? If Apple is any indication, it does so by staying true to its core values, by continuing to innovate, and by having a leader who understands and respects the company's legacy. Even without Jobs, Apple continued to push the boundaries of technology, cementing its place as a tech leader. Scene script. Think you know everything about Apple? Think again. Sure, we're all familiar with the shiny iPhones and the sleek MacBooks, but there's so much more to Apple than meets the eye. Let's start with a surprising fact. Did you know that the first iPhone was not actually the first phone made by Apple? That's right. Before the iPhone came, the ROKRE1, a collaboration between Motorola and Apple, launched in 2005. It was essentially a phone with iTunes, a precursor to the smartphone era. However, it couldn't hold more than 100 songs, and it was painfully slow to transfer music. This venture didn't quite hit the mark, but it certainly paved the way for the iPhone we know and love today. Here's another fascinating fact. In the late 90s, Apple was on the brink of bankruptcy. Yes, you heard that right. Apple, the tech giant, was once close to going under. It was the launch of the iPod in 2001 that turned the company's fortunes around. This small device, capable of holding a thousand songs in your pocket, revolutionized the music industry and set Apple on the path to becoming one of the wealthiest corporations in the world. And have you ever wondered about the Apple logo, the bitten apple? The bite is there for a reason. It's not a reference to the biblical tale of Adam and Eve as some might think. It's actually quite practical. The bite was added so that people wouldn't mistake it for a cherry or a tomato. That's right, the iconic logo is as much about clarity as it is about design. Apple's journey is a testament to the power of innovation and resilience, a journey that continues to surprise and inspire us.